welcome to this uh, unit 9 uh, lecture 1 and actually unit 9 is uh, with only one lecture because most of the topics of unit 9 are something that you need to remember you need to read and recall in your mind there is nothing much to be explained that's why you only keep the explanation part as only one lecture okay uh, and rest of the part uh, is already given in the books where you can prepare from there so the topics that we'll actually uh, cover in in, the, in this lecture about unit 9 uh, which is a classification biology as well as the classification and, and the distribution of different species throughout the Indian subcontinent so we'll talk about the animal classification uh, and also plant ca classification although is there in the syllabus we mostly focus on the animal classification properties of different phylum of invertebrates we'll talk about the Podifera, Nidaria, Tinophora, Platyhelminths, Ascalminths all the different phylum of invertebrates their, their characteristics and examples we'll see properties of different classes of, of vertebrates for example you know uh, fishes, chondrichthys, osteichthys that's the part amphibia, reptilia, abs, mammalia all these different classes of vertebrates and their features their examples we'll also talk about cladogram analysis and we'll solve math problems from cladogram analysis we try to figure out uh, the relationship between uh, organism and the relationship between organism and their ancestor try to figure out how to solve this cladogram problems because cladogram problems are every single year given in the CS net exam okay so let's begin and uh, the numbers written after every single subtopic name here represents the total number of approximate questions uh, we are going to expect from this topics in CSI net exam. Okay, so this is the only lecture of unit 9. We have kept only one lecture for unit 9. It's because in unit 9 there are most of the things you need to read and remember because the questions from unit 9 will be based on the memory so memory based questions where you have to read a lot remember a lot that's why we are also studying this unit 9 almost like middle and a halfway end of our preparation because it's better for you to read unit 9 at the end of your preparation from the blueprint book that you got okay now the question is uh, why uh, we keep this uh, unit 9 as a memory base because the question that they ask from unit 9 because it's a classification biology and the classification biology of animals and a little bit about the classification biology of the plants but mostly we'll focus on the classification biology of animals and classification biology of animals includes the animal classification of all kinds for classification of invertebrates as well as the classification of vertebrates and we also need to talk about all the different phylum of invertebrates their important characteristics similarly all the classes of vertebrates and all their important characteristics with example and all so see when you want to know a lot of characteristics of invertebrates as well as vertebrates which is kind of a hardcore zoology subject you need to read and remember there's nothing much left to be explained much you know this is if this is coordinate these are the features of coordinate if this is uh, platyhelminths these are the features of platyhelminths there's nothing to be explained much so i will explain the portions which i find really important to explain but this unit 9 you can divide this into two different type one is this classification part of the biology plus there is also uh, the cladogram analysis the, the cladogram analysis is such a thing which you need the guidance to prepare that's why the you can see this lecture of two half, one half in this uh, live lectures and the second half is also with the whiteboard with explaining cladogram as well as practicing some cladogram problems because you probably have seen in CSI net exam that uh, every single time in CSI net paper there are <clears throat> almost like pictures of cladogram two, three different questions based on that from unit 9 in group C. So if there are four to five group C questions from unit 9, approximately two means 40 to 50 percent of that question comes from the cladogram. So if you practice cladogram well, you will be able to answer the cladogram and it takes really less time to practice cladogram. So be strong about the cladogram analysis so that you can get to answer one to two questions from group C from cladogram which does not take much time for preparing. While the second thing is regarding this classification biology, I'm going to tell you the mnemonics I'm going to share you uh, what are the ways to prepare for all this classification scheme how to remember them with a proper strategy but actually you need to read and remember that's what it's all about so let's begin with uh, the animal classification and in the animal classification I'll be telling you generalized classification and how exactly we classify animals 
based on their body organization, based on the type of cells they have, based on the type of tissue organization they have, based on the body symmetry and many more things. So I'm going to tell you that. So first things first, uh, when we start talking about the classification scheme, there's a hierarchy of classification. And the hierarchy of classification continues uh, with the biggest uh, zone is domain, which is not listed here. We're starting from kingdom in this slide. But what I can say, <coughs> it's domain, the biggest of all. Because, you know, all the animals and plants that are living right now in the planet are categorized into three different domains. Okay, So either it can be uh, archaea or animalia or uh, archaea, eukarya or bacteria. Sorry, archaea, eukarya and bacteria. These are the three domains of life. So these are the biggest among that domain, for example, the domain eukarya. Now, inside that domain, we have a kingdom. Okay, so kingdom animalia. So simply if you begin from there, so domain is the biggest of all in the human, I mean in animal classification or classification of any organism. Domain is the biggest and the and the simplest is the species. And the species is a unit, and <clears throat> domain is the biggest one. So after domain comes kingdom. So if you think about kingdom. Kingdom can be animal kingdom, it can be plant kingdom. So let's consider one example. An example, let's say human beings. So humans are known as Homo sapiens. And where exactly human belong? It starts with the kingdom that human belongs is animal, right? Animal kingdom. Now break down kingdom, we get phylum. So a little smaller than kingdom is a phylum. That means many phylums together forms a kingdom. So the phylum that humans are in is chordates. Then if you break phylums down, we will get class. Okay. Now, so many classes together make the phylum. So class, uh, which class uh, we are in? Mammals. Then if we break down classes into smaller part, we get order. And what order we are in? Primates. If you break down order, we we'll get family. What family we are in? Hominids. And then we got with uh, breaking down family, genus. Now we belong to genus Homo. Uh, okay. And, uh, and, and you can see hominids with upright posture belongs to this homo genus. And finally, with uh, breaking down genus, we get species. And the species we have is homo sapiens. So member of genus homo with a high forehead and thin skull bones. That is a characteristic feature of homo sapiens. Okay? So this is what you can see from the large animal kingdom, how we are finding out one particular species and where they actually belong in that huge kingdom. For humans, we begin from the animal, chordates, mammals, primates, hominids, homo, and then homo sapiens. That's how it works. Now, the easiest way to remember this hierarchy is go with dumb king Philip come over from German soil. Dumb, D for domain, king, K for kingdom, Philip, P for phylum, come, C for class, over, O for order, from, F for family, German, G for genus, soil, S for species. That's how you can arrange dumb King Philip come over from German soil. That's how you can remember from the domain <coughs> towards the species. So you should remember that while you're going towards the species, we are going to specific features, unique characteristics, which are common to that particular organism belonging to that species. And we also know the species concept clearly because we have discussed about unit 11, that the species means the members, they will be engaged in uh, reproduction with themselves. Okay. And uh, no two members of a different species can engage in reproduction. Okay, so uh, members of different species cannot mate, but members of same species can mate. So this is the overall classification scheme. Now, broad classification. If you if you think about the broad classification of animal kingdom, you can see a general overview of this classification. Continuing with the animal kingdom, we can break it down into unicellular animals and multicellular animals. Now, the unicellular animals can uh, be protozoa uh, and the multicellular organisms can be divided into many classes. So, in the multicellular animals are known as metazoa. Meta means many, proto is the earlier sense. So, metazoa can be divided into invertebrates as well as vertebrates. And the invertebrates, example, sponges, silomates, worms, arthropods, mollusks, echinoderms, while vertebrates, example, fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, mammals, all of it. So this is a broad range of classification, but this is not the standard CSI and it generally asks question form. So we need to understand this whole classification in a really uh, a little more deeper level. And that's why we have this picture in our hand. 
you know, this slide is the most important slide of understanding all the animal classification in this particular lecture. Is because this slide is not only giving you how exactly the kingdom Animalia is classified, but also it helps you to understand how to remember this classification in a sequential way, in a logical manner. 